Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka A Drive. I bring you guys a brand new video today, and today we are breaking down 40 plus things that you may have missed from the most recent Pokemon Presents Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus trailers. Me and my team went through the trailers, through the websites, and scrubbed everything we could possibly find to bring you guys this amazing video. So please take a second out of your day and drop a like on the video. And make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new, as we are closing in on a million subscribers here in the A-Drive Army. And I'm going to have some amazing content here for Legends Arceus, BDSP, and much, much more. So get excited for all that. And without further ado, let's jump into the things that you may have missed from the most recent Pokemon Presents. Of course, if there's anything that you feel that we missed from this video, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know and maybe we'll make a follow-up video. All right, so we're gonna start with BDSP first, then I'm gonna transition to Arceus, and then we'll talk about a little bit of kind of both at the end. But first thing is badge cleaning is back. We've got this nice screenshot of the various badges in the game and you can presumably scrub them off. The game corner has now been replaced in the game with a clothing store. You can choose skin tone options for your characters in BDSP, which is a nice addition there. It seems as though we are not gonna get a battle frontier, but rather we're gonna get a battle tower. It has been confirmed that you can use online connectivity in the underground. And here we actually have a full underground map so you can see where those different biomes are for the various Pokemon that spawn in the underground based on the statues you have placed in your underground base. And from this screenshot here, we see that Bidoof is number 399, which indicates that we're gonna have the national Pokedex of the 493 Pokemon from Sinnoh all the way up to Arceus presumably in this game in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now switching gears to Legends Arceus, we know that the region name Hisui actually means Jade, which was a translation given to me by a friend of mine, Pokestarmy. There's a map next to Silene, and that actually displays the layout of Jubilife City, which is the main city that we have in the games in Pokemon Legends Arceus. We also have this huge map to explore where we can break out all the details of Pokemon Legends Arceus and where everything is. Expect to see a deeper dive on the channel of this map right here. Another thing I noticed was dynamic weather. If you look at these two screenshots, you can actually see they're located in the same area based on the water and the kind of structures in the back. And based on one screenshot being rain, seeing Shellos and Gastrodon spawning, and another screenshot not being rain, we see that there's gonna be different Pokemon spawning at different times based on weather. So we may have full dynamic weather throughout the game. Further, we have confirmation that there's gonna be day and night cycles for Pokemon, as we've seen different screenshots of Clefairy at nighttime, Rolt at nighttime, and other Pokemon during the daytime. So another feature where you can explore the same area presumably multiple times, get different weather, different day and night times, and see different Pokemon spawns. Now shifting gear to the new Pokemon forms, Wydeer is the new evolution of Stantler. It is a normal and psychic type Pokemon. Basculegion is the new evolved form of Basculin, which is a water ghost type Pokemon. It remains to be seen whether there's going to be a blue stripe Basculegion or some other form for that Pokemon, but that's something to keep an eye out as we get closer to the game's release. Hisuian Braviary is the new evolved form of regular Rufflet, and it's gonna give you a psychic and flying type Pokemon. And then last but not least is the Hisuian Growlithe, which is fire and rock type. So it is confirmed to be fire and rock type. And you may not know this, but Growlithe's form is actually based on the Koma Inu, which is a lion dog. And they're usually statues that guard shrines and temples. You can check this image here for a nice reference. So we have a good idea of what Arcanine might evolve into. It is confirmed that the new character Commander Kamado is actually related to Professor Rowan from the Sinnoh region. And we have a lot of reason to believe that Silene, one of the new characters in the game, has some sort of relation to Cyrus. Now, that's not confirmed yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if Silene ends up being evil or has some sort of negative story attached to her, because it's she's probably related to Cyrus. I think we can agree on that one. Obviously, there's some sort of a tie between the Galaxy team that you play as in Legends Arceus and what becomes Team Galactic in the Sinnoh region. And I found this to be very interesting. There's actually a Galarian Weezing statue at the top of Jubilife. So we've seen some various statues around the, the region, but Galarian Weezing was a Pokemon that was introduced in the Gala region. Now we're seeing that it's actually from all the way back in the Hisuian region. Very, very interesting stuff. Now for some new and returning features, we see that Shink's Pokedex entry was named one out of two. Does that mean that there's a different form of Shinx? Is it for its gender? Is it for Shawnee forms? A little bit more information is needed, but very, very interesting stuff here that the research page displayed it as one out of two. Pokemon in this game have variable height and weight, much like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I'm curious if this is gonna be apparent in the overworld, as if you find a Pokemon that's a little taller than another Pokemon, if they'll show different sizes next to each other. The raging Pokemon that were shown, like Ursaring and others, have a small icon next to their username, which actually could indicate that they are a boss battle, much like gym battles from the main series games. It's gonna be interesting 
interested to see if that's actually what this is, but they definitely have a different icon next to their, their Pokemon name. In terms of those bosses that were confirmed, we saw Ursaring, Luxray, Gyarados, Drapion, Garchomp, and Probopass. Some of those shots in the trailer were pretty quick, but those were all the bosses that we've seen. There may be more than eight. There may be a ton of bosses, but it seems as though those are going to be the bosses, at least up to this point, that we're going to face. We've seen that Pokeballs are confirmed, obviously, but there are also Great Balls confirmed and Heavy Balls as well. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you guys how you can get a bunch of Heavy Balls, too. It seems as though you have the option to sit outside in the wild area, basically, or in the wild Hisuian region with all of your Pokemon all at once, as per this screenshot. And berry trees and ingredients are also present in the game, and you can attack different trees to knock berries out of them and potentially formulate apricots to make more Pokeballs. I found it was interesting, and this was a shot that was really quick, so you didn't have a good chance to look at it, but Snorlax was found in the wild, as was Munchlax. So we knew Chingling was in the game, but it's definitely confirmed that wild baby Pokemon are gonna be roaming around the Hisuian region. There's a new item in the game called Smoke Bombs, which you can craft and ultimately use to distract wild Pokemon and blind them so they can't see you when you're sneaking up on them trying to catch them. And it seems as though there's an option to do hair customization as per this store, which has clippers on it. So we're gonna assume that you can Get your haircut there. It's a little bit uncertain, but there are gonna be some sort of online features for this game, and you're gonna need a paid online Nintendo subscription to be able to access some of them as per the website. While we originally anticipated Legends Arceus to be a single player experience, it has been confirmed now that it supports up to two players. Now, to what extent that means, we really don't know yet, but it's gonna be interesting to see how that all breaks out and how you'll be able to utilize two players in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I wouldn't expect a full Wi-Fi system, but you may be able to trade, because we know Pokemon home support is there, you may be able to do something with other people. I actually saw this post from True Green 7 He pointed out that Rowlet at level 12 has 103 HP, which means that stats are gonna be completely different in this game and completely change everything we know because at level 12, Rowlet would probably have like 40 HP. It should not have 103 HP, that's for sure. Now we'll shift gear to pre-order bonuses and other things that are coming soon. There's gonna be a Manaphy egg that's gonna be distributed for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl through February 21st. The real question is, is it gonna be shiny huntable? Because Manaphy is one of the most elusive shiny Pokemon of all time. There's also gonna be a pre-order outfit for Hisui and Growlithe for players up until May 9th. You also can get a serial code to obtain 30 heavy balls for the uh, release of Legends Arceus. And there's also gonna be another special outfit for pre-ordering in certain retailers. Pokemon has also confirmed that there's gonna be the special edition Legends V Arceus card, which looks amazing. I'll be honest, this is one of the most beautiful artworks I've ever seen, and I'm definitely gonna to try to get my hands on that. And the last bit of information that I wanted to cover is that the game is considered finished in terms of its data. There's 13 gigabytes of data. In comparison, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was 13.4 gigabytes, Sword and Shield was 10.3 gigabytes, and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is going to be 10 gigabytes as well. So BDSP is gonna have about the same amount of information as Sword and Shield, whereas Legends Arceus is gonna be almost the same size as Breath of the Wild in terms of raw file size on your Nintendo Switch. That was a ton of information to cover in this video, but I wanted to go through it all very, very hastily so you guys can get the full rundown of the things you may have missed. Over 40 things that we just covered in the last 10 minutes, which I think is pretty impressive. Be sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it. If you think I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. We're gonna be creating a ton of Pokemon content over Legends Arceus and much, much more over the coming months. And I cannot wait to take this new journey with you guys through the Hisuian region. It's gonna be amazing. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. That's gonna be it for me, guys. My name is Dan. I also go by A-Drive, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.